So, a little bit of bad news on the Nova build. We've kind of had to take a couple steps back, but I uh, just wanted to do a little update on that, explain what's going on and where we're at and why we made the decision that we made and tell you what that decision is. Uh, Nova's still getting built. Don't want anyone to question about that. And we're still building it as quickly as we can. Uh, we just ran into a little bit of a setback, so I'm going to talk about that today. It, if you can't, yeah, steering column's not attached anymore. It's being held up by the bungee cord. That kind of has a little bit of something to do with it. Or a little bit of a hint at what we ended up doing, or what we're doing. Uh, but before we get talking about that, we have started taking apart these seats that we bought. These are original Chevelle seats, but the Chevelle and the Nova seats were basically the same. They just had slightly different styled um, seat covers. That's what those things are called. So we're taking these apart, getting the frames separated, and we're gonna take the frames to a powder coat place and have them sandblasted, powder coated, make sure that they're good for many years to come. We're also not going to be using these seat covers or these backs. Uh, I figure that might be kind of obvious, but I thought I would state it just <laughs> to be on the safe side. All the work that's going into this car, I didn't want someone to think that we might just be kind of throwing these seat um, pieces, covers, the plastic, I don't know what you actually call a shell maybe, these little plastic pieces. We have brand new uh, seat covers and the backings and the sides that we've actually had for a while. They came with the Nova back when we bought it in 2005, 2006. We're going with a black Nova SS style uh, vinyl seat. It's basically a reproduction of what they used back in the 1970s. And of course the matching black uh, back pieces and side pieces with the chrome trim around them. So those are gonna look really good when we get them in the car. Really excited about that. These seats are a pain to take apart though. Getting the plastic pieces and everything off is fine. The uh, rails on the bottom and all that, but taking the seat covers off, man, they've got these little rings called hog rings that are holding the covers and everything against the frame. And they've got so many of these things, you gotta clip them all one by one, get them off. And it probably took us three and a half hours today just to get the back of one seat completely cleaned off. It was just, whew, a lot of work to get that done. But all right, let's take a little look at what I was talking about at the beginning of the video. You'll notice that there's something missing right here. And that is the power steering gearbox. We decided we're going to replace the power steering gearbox. We rebuilt the one that came with the car, but the rebuild kits, they only really come, well, the one that we got just came with seals, gaskets, and O-rings, the components to just help make sure it doesn't leak. And when we put it back in, we got the steering column and everything hooked up. We had like, at the minimum about one and a half inches of play in the steering wheel and at max it got up to like four to five inches of play in the steering wheel and that's just too much you don't want the steering wheel to move that far before it starts actually turning the wheels we tightened the set screw on top of it i uh, found that a lot of people recommend doing that it helps out we actually tightened that thing as far as we could get it which is not recommended by anyone we don't recommend but we just wanted to test what would happen if we tightened it as far as we could and we still had an inch and a half of play in the steering wheel and at that point it was so tight that when you cleared that inch and a half you could not turn the steering wheel any farther to turn the wheels so we are thinking that the gears or something in that are probably just worn from over time and it's just not going to work for the rebuild so we took it out. I've got it in a box over here. We're going to take this back. We're ordering a 
we are ordering a remanufactured one. We're not actually ordering a brand new one. Um, brand new ones can cost anywhere from, from what I've seen doing searches online, can cost anywhere from $400 to $1,000. That's just a lot of money right now to spend. So we went with a remanufactured power steering gearbox. So that's going to save us a little bit of money. And hopefully, since it's remanufactured by a professional company, it'll be good to go. We won't have any issues with it. But we're going to take this one back to them. We're going to swap it out so we don't have to pay that core charge that comes with these kinds of purchases. And then hopefully we'll get that new box put in and things will be good to go for the car. So before I fast forward this video to having that new one installed, I don't know if you noticed, but it is quite a bit brighter in this garage. Um, honestly, now that I'm saying this, I might have talked about this in the last video that I did. And if I did, just skip this part, but we bought brand new LED bulbs uh, for our hanging lights in the garage. They make a really cool, uh, it's called a universal replacement. So you can get these LED bulbs that will go in the ballast from a fluorescent bulb. So you don't have to change the ballast. You don't have to do any kind of special wiring or anything like that. They do make a direct wire option, but we didn't want to have to worry about all of that, changing the wires and everything. So we just went with a universal replacement. It's working out really good. Definitely helps us see in here. Uh, but yeah, so if you want to brighten up your garage and you have fluorescence, check out some LEDs. For now, I'm going to fast forward this to reinstalling the power steering gearbox. Hey, what's up? Just wanted to interrupt this uh, video about the power steering. Just to let y'all know that as of right now, South Poly Garage is at the 100 subscriber goal that I put up in a previous video. And that means that I have placed the order for the next component for the Silverado. Order was placed a few days ago. So just waiting on shipping, everything like that. If you're interested in the upcoming Silverado videos, make sure you're subscribed, keep an eye out, and you might want to click that little bell icon that everybody keeps talking about, you know, just so you're notified when those videos get posted. But uh, anyway, thank you all for subscribing. Thank you for the support. Now we're going to go back to the power steering gearbox. You can see here the newly purchased power steering gearbox is now installed. Hose is reconnected. Steering column reconnected. And this new one is a ton better than the other one. I can't show you because I've actually taken the steering wheel off the steering column. Because once we put everything back together, the steering wheel actually ended up being upside down with the uh, wheels and everything being as straight as we can tell by eyesight. But there's almost no um, slack in the steering wheel anymore thanks to this newly refurbished, professionally refurbished power steering gearbox. So that's great. Got that fixed. I will say, I just want to mention the paperwork for this gearbox does say that all adjustments to slack and anything like that have to be made during the rebuild process when all the adjustments can't be made as everything's being put together. It specifically states not to try to adjust it once you've installed it on the car. So all of those adjustments we are making with that top nut or bolt up there, that paperwork basically says we shouldn't have been doing that to begin with. Obviously, I'm not a professional mechanic. I don't really know how much credit you're gonna put on my words. I'm just telling you the information that we read. Uh, I know a lot of places online, people are saying that you can use that to adjust the slack and adjust the steering and how tight it is and everything. But my recommendation based on what we read is don't do it that way. Either replace the power steering gearbox or take it to a professional that knows of kind of what they're doing and can either take the one off that you have and rebuild and adjust it properly instead of just trying to tighten that nut on top and hope that that fixes your problem. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna get the steering wheel fixed so that it's straight instead of upside down. I'm gonna cut the video here. That's really it for this one anyway. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, give it a good old thumbs up down there. Leave some comments, let me know if anything that I put in this video helped you or just give me some feedback on what you think of the video itself. Thank you. I appreciate the support of the channel. But for now, this is South Park Garage signing out.